Well, one thing I know about this community, it is steeped in hope and optimism. And that's why so many people have stayed and fought for this community, because they care so deeply about it. And people harden their resolve, and they don't just, they don't just survive, they thrive. And as the first governor born in Buffalo, I have worked really hard for this community too, because I know it matters. And I know what it feels like to feel like you've been overlooked for too long. That is a part of the psyche of someone coming from Western New York, that other places mattered more. It was always another part of our state that got more attention. And I've been laser focused for the last two and a half years on changing that trajectory. And I fought hard. And even after the shooting, we came here with the mayor, the county executive, Crystal People Stokes, Tim Kenny, all of our leaders, we came together and said, we have to bring more resources. We brought $50 million to help people pay their bills and to keep small businesses alive and to even bring people healthy food at a time when their grocery store was shut down. We also knew that there's places like the Broadway Market that are so fascinating and exciting, but it should not just be the days leading up to Easter. It should be year round. This is an asset. This is a cultural asset for us. So we awarded $10 million to this part of our city for that community to be lifted up. We also awarded $55 million to do even more at the Northland Corridor, the third phase of work there, because we're just getting started. $37 million, as I said, for the Broadway market. And $30 million for the Michigan Street African American Corridor because I say it's about time. About time we celebrate our history. And the Carly Gardens, oh my gosh, it's going to be extraordinary. New homes for 149 families, a massive renovation we just announced. We're tackling an even bigger project at the Ellicott Town Center, $71 million to preserve 281 homes. And yesterday, we announced... $10 million for the Buffalo Sewer Authority, and also we're going to build an underground tunnel. Now, those of you who don't get real excited about infrastructure the way I do, 14 years and look, an underground tunnel that contains stormwater and flood and prevent flooding around Skajakwita Creek, and so that's what we're focusing on as well. We also announced yesterday, the mayor's office announced, that the Perry Street projects that have been mocking this part of our community for decades, that when people come to visit and their first impression is what was an eyesore, and as those of us who are locals saw this all the time, and, you know, only partially occupied, I rode my bike around there all the time looking at the broken windows and the blight saying, no, we can do better. We are going to transform that into a vibrant 24-7 community. And I thank the mayor and the Buffalo Housing Authority for all the others and $205 million of state resources to make that happen. My friends, this city is being transformed. It's all happening now. So my question is, not one to ever rest on our laurels or our accomplishments of yesterday's announcements, how do we seize this momentum and take it to the next level? My view is sometimes you can't carve out a better future until you right the wrongs of the past. And that's exactly what we're doing with the Kensington Expressway Project. Two years ago in my very first executive budget, I laid out not my vision, but the vision of a community championed by Crystal People Stokes, who brought it to my attention. And she says there have been people fighting for this since the 1970s, but truly in earnest for the last 15 years. Can we look at this? Can we look at a strategy that can transform this part of our city and make Frederick Law Olmsted finally proud of what has happened under his watch back a century ago? I said yes. My philosophy has always been go big or go home, and I'm never going home except to Buffalo. So. 
One billion dollars announced for a bold grassroots plan driven by the dedicated people of this community, people who never gave up hope. And many of you are here today. And I want to thank all of you for what you've done. It's been extraordinary. And I want to first of all thank someone who's here in spirit who's here in spirit, because I can feel Stephanie. I can still feel Stephanie Barber Jeter. I can feel her presence here. And Edwin, I want her husband Edwin to stand up, because you have been on this journey together. And I thank all the members of Rock. First of all, let's just give all of you a round of applause. Please stand up if you've been on this journey together. All the members of this great organization, thank you, thank you, thank you. I also want to acknowledge, I'll be introducing her in a moment, but Majority Leader Crystal Peoples-Stokes. I mean, thank you for being the voice of this community, not just here, but in the halls of Albany when it really makes a difference. So let's give her a round of applause as well. Our state senator, Tim Kennedy, who's been out there championing this community with all his heart and soul, a great friend of ours, Tim Kennedy. County Executive Mark Polencars has joined us. County Executive, thank you for believing in East Buffalo. Thank you. As I mentioned, Mayor Byron Brown, thank you, Byron Brown, for pushing this forward. <laughs> County Legislative Chair April Baskin has joined us. Congratulations. <laughs> Our District Attorney John Flynn has joined us as well. Thank you for many, many years of service. Monica Wallace has joined us from the Assembly. Karen McMahon has joined us. Thank you for representing this area so well. All the members of the City Council and also extraordinary members from my administration. I battled the DOT my entire life. I want you to know that. When I was a member of the Hamburg Town Board, I was fighting the Thruway Authority over the tolls. I was telling the DOT, no, you're not going to build that road through J.P. Fitzgerald's because that's my cheers in Hamburg. And I went down there and I fought them and I fought them nonstop. And now if you go over to see J.P. Fitzgerald's in Hamburg, yes, you wonder why the road curves like that? Because I went to war with the DOT and we won. But here's the good news. Under the leadership of my commissioner, Marie Me Therese Dominguez, you don't have to have that battle, because she is on your side. She is on your side. And I want her to please stand up. Thank you. Thank you. I can't tell you how many people come up to me all over the state and say, is this really the DOT? They're actually nice and they're working with us. They're not saying no all the time. So thank you for restoring people's faith in government. Thank you. Another fighter on my team, our DEC Commissioner Basil Sagos has joined us here. Thank you for all you do. Great announcements yesterday. Thank you. Someone who needs no introduction here in Buffalo, our former controller, former assemblyman, and now current DMV Commissioner Mark Schroeder has joined us. <laughs> Stephanie Brown has joined us as well. Let's give her another round of applause. We're we'll hearing from Stephanie, or Sydney, I'm sorry, Sydney, Sydney Brown. Also, our announcement hinges on support from the Biden administration, the Biden administration represented by Richard Marquis, the U.S. DOT Federal Highway Division Administrator. Please stand up and take a bow. Thank you. Thank you. And all of our brothers and sisters in labor would looking forward to 13,000 good paying jobs. Paul Brown and all you members of labor, please stand up. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Nobody builds it like you do, so thank you. I'm so proud. I will say it's been a long road. It's literally a long road. The DOT has hosted over 70 meetings, 70 in-person meetings with the people of this community to listen 
to listen and let those ideas shape where we are here to, why we are here today. And let me tell you, it all worked out. Just last March, I was here with Senator Kennedy, Majority Leader Christopher Stokes, and others, the mayor. We sat here with federal representation. Secretary of Transportation Pete Buttigieg came here to Buffalo and he told me that East Buffalo was going to be just one of six cities in the entire country that are getting federal funds at our request to stitch together neighborhoods that have been severed and torn apart by the racist urban development policies of the last century. He said it's time to heal the wounds of the past and we could not agree more. So I thank the Biden administration for their $55 million. Let me repeat that, $55 million from the Biden administration to support this project right here. It's the largest award of its kind in the nation. As I mentioned, Back in the 1950s and 60s, people in power built these cavernous superhighways. They didn't care where they went. It's from New York City up to Niagara Falls and Rochester and Syracuse and Buffalo. It was all about moving people out of our urban core. It was about white flight. And it transformed communities like Amherst and Clarence, God bless them, but a lot of that transformation should have happened right here. It's right here. Hundreds and hundreds of lives are uprooted and businesses destroyed, all in the name of this quicker route to the suburbs. That's what we're dealing with today. And they actually chose neighborhoods where people did not have the political clout to fight back. They were easy prey. They were not elected officials in city hall, city council, the county legislator. Oh, that would not happen today, but this is what happened years ago. These are places that were viewed as disposable. Who cares? But as I said, we saw it in Syracuse, and right today we are fixing it with the transformation of the I-81 corridor, we're fixing it. We saw it in Rochester, the inner loop. We're fixing the Rochester as well, and now we are laser focused on sewing back together the wonderful tapestry known as East Buffalo. And I could not be prouder. I'm proud today to announce that the Kensington Expressway project has been officially given the green light by the federal government and a critically important step. Thank you. Thank you. And the federal government is not easy to get through. I just want to tell you this. Uh, they found no significant impact, which means the environmental review process, which was long, intense, uh, comprehensive, that is now over. And ladies and gentlemen, this project can go now full steam ahead, and we're going to start construction later this year. Start construction. Shovels in the ground. So we'll work on the cap section of the 33 between Dodge and Sydney, construct a six-lane tunnel beneath to keep the traffic flowing again. We're just going in the same direction. But what's going to happen to this community is going to be extraordinary. And we're going to bring back all that amazing green space you saw in the video. It's coming back. Places people can congregate. Let the trees grow. Let the grass grow. Let the kids be able to play. All that was robbed from this community years ago. We we're going to be building it on 11 acres. And for all of our football fans, that's the equivalent of eight football fields right here now brought back for this community. We heard your calls. We listened. We know you wanted upgrades to local streets on both sides of the 33. So we folded them into the project. We said yes. That was not a no. That was a yes. We also said we're willing to fix up nine miles of local roads. Projects that would not have happened will not happen but for this happening. That means resurfacing, replacing, crumbling sidewalks, the curbs, improving the signage, planting lots and lots of trees. I said we're gonna plant 25 million trees over the next decade and I'm gonna start right here. <laughs> Improvement 
improvements for our pedestrians, better sidewalks, handicap accessibility, and as I mentioned, construction beginning this year. Can I promise that, Commissioner? Come on, starting right this year. So one thing I want you to know, as we continue to listen, I've also directed our commissioner and the DOT to study future phases of this project. So this does not end just here. I want to reconnect communities further north. But this will all be done in collaboration with the community. And that's why we have a DOT outreach center at 630 Humboldt Parkway. It's going to be staff. You'll be able to drop in. And you're going to be sitting there, Commissioner? You got others? OK. <laughs> Come say hi to the Commissioner. Um, now, I also know there are a handful of naysayers out there. Okay, Not surprising. It happens elsewhere. Seems to happen with a lot of intensity here in Western New York. I get it. I get it. And there are people who want us to scrap the plan and start all over. Take us back to the very beginning. Back to the 1970s, perhaps, and maybe there'll be some other group and all, the, all of us have passed on that'll carry the baton someday in some future. My friends, the stars have lined up. The stars have lined up right now. When you have the clout, you have the Biden administration in office today, right now, making this happen. You have my administration right now making this happen. You have Crystal People Stokes as the majority leader right now making this happen. Senator Tim Kennedy, the chair of the Transportation Committee, making this happen. I don't know a better time in our lifetime to make this happen. I say, let's do it right now. Let's do it now. a time in life when you just have to go forward. You just have to say yes instead of saying no. And that's exactly what we're doing. And I have people here fought too long and fought too hard. Fought too long and fought too hard. Now, and I'm, and I'm gonna go out on a limb here. My staff gets nervous when I'm always wandering off script, but that's okay, it's who I am. When I moved back here, from Washington in 1991. We were told that we were going to see this beautiful new structure connect Canada and Buffalo, that this deteriorating, not exactly beautiful bridge was going to come down. We had a potential for a signature bridge or twin bridges or something that speaks to the, the pride we have in our community. A monument to our own ambition, like other cities have done. Because bridges are also statements. 1991 was a long time ago. My kids were toddlers. They now have their own kids. That's what happens when you get agitated voices who have cloud and say we need more studies and we got to worry about the birds and the fish and yes we do i love birds and fish but i was pretty convinced that they'd be able to figure out how to go over the bridge okay because they want to survive as well so we kill too many projects and crystal people's nailed people stokes nailed it when she said it's paralysis by analysis, yeah. right? You can study everything to death. And we're going to do the right thing. We'll always do what's right. I've got the DEC commissioner sitting here. He's protecting the environment. He's not going to let anything happen in this community. In fact, we're going to make it better. It's going to be better for people, healthier, safer, cleaner. And some will say, well, we have, turned out we didn't need the Peace Bridge after all because traffic is down. You know why traffic is down? They all went to Detroit instead, okay? Did anybody figure that one out? They should be here. They wanted this to happen. We lost this opportunity. That meant jobs and opportunities went somewhere else to another state because we did not act. I will not be the governor of a state who refuses to be aggressive, bold, transformative, and finally, once and for all, make things happen. I'm doing that right here with this project, right now. 
Thank you. Thank you. So, I'm not saying this is a cure-all for this side of our city. I am not saying this is everything. But let this be a foundation for a larger vision. Let people know they matter to us. That their families have value, their homes have value, their children have value, and we want their kids to live here. So that's what we're doing. We're building a physical link between housing and small businesses and job training and parks and culture. It's going to be extraordinary. And these are all the essential elements we need to bring hope back to this community. And this community never gave up on itself. I never gave up on this community. Our elected officials never gave up. But people from the outside would look and say, wow, there was such a rich history here. Where are they today? And they're going to look back someday at this moment in time and say, this is when we seized our destiny and said we're going to make things happen. I want people to be proud of their neighborhood. I want them to walk with that swagger. That sense of pride that you get, not just from changing the physical character of a place and changing roads and bridges, but also it's a sense that we are important enough to have projects like this in our neighborhood. And it changes the psychology of a community. So this is more than transportation. This is more than transportation. We're writing a brand new chapter. So as 50, 100 years from now, people say, yes, they were bold. They got it done. We reunited a community that never should have been severed in the first place. And we got it done together. And I want to thank people. I want to thank the people who never gave up. And I want to thank someone who is a fighter to her core. Someone who's always said, we can do better. And who got my ear, because we've been friends a long time. Long time. Ladies and gentlemen, let me present to you our majority leader, Crystal People Stokes, to tell you how she got it done. I'm going to start like I always do. I'm going to give God all the glory. I am absolutely thrilled to be here today. It's been a long pathway, but sometimes the things that are, take the longest and are the hardest work are the most fulfilling. This is fulfilling. We're talking about a billion dollars being spent on the east side of Buffalo. Now, I'm born and raised in Buffalo, but I've never seen that before. And I believe that it's more than just environmental issues that will be gone away. It's actually economics. It's an opportunity to create economics for the people who live in this community. That doesn't necessarily mean just somebody who gets a job. By the way, um, I know there are people who are already working on making that happen. But it's also about opportunities to create your own business. Yeah. It's also about opportunities to, to learn how to have a construction business that is sustainable. Yeah. So I want to give all the my heartfelt feelings to Governor Hochul. Because quite honestly, even though we have been working on this for a lot of years and we had the federal government involved, even in the past, and we had the previous governor involved, no one has stepped up to the plate like Governor Hochul. No one. And for that, I'm eternally grateful. To her, I certainly want to honor all of my colleagues in government. They have already been mentioned, but I want to pay a special mention to my colleagues in the State Assembly. Two of them are here with me today, Karen McMahon and Monica Wallace. All of us from the Western New York region supported this project. We sat and met on it. We wrote a letter, and all of us signed it. And in their absence, Pat Burke and Jonathan Rivera, who were in that room as well, and these two ladies right here, we said from the assembly, when we spoke to the speaker and sent them the letter, this is something that needs to happen for this community in particular. And so I certainly want to honor my colleagues in the state assembly. Thank you ladies very much. 
And I honor all of your elected officials in there in the room because there's a, something that's happening in Buffalo when people work together as opposed to working a separate. And when people work together, we get results. This is the result of that. So thank you, Mayor Brown. Thank you, Senator Kennedy. Thank you, city council members, including the new ones. They worked on this project too. Leah Harden Pope and Zanetta Everhart. They worked on this project as well, even before they were elected. And so again, I can only just say thank you. And just to not forget the legacy of this, I, I want to honor Clark Eaton yes. in, his, in his life. I want to honor Lumen Ross, who started the Black Chamber of Commerce in his absence. And I certainly want to honor Stephanie Barber Jeter because, oh my God. And I want to thank her husband who was here for allowing her to spend all of her time, because she spent a lot of time, not just on behalf of Hamlin Park, but on behalf of Rock on working on this project. And honestly, as the governor mentioned, this is broader than just reconnecting this part of the 33. It's going to span nine miles outside of the area with infrastructure projects. That's a Stephanie Barber Jeter effect. That's a Stephanie Barber Jeter effect. And it's also a Stephanie Barber Jeter effect that we would be seeking resources in this current budget to really study and analyze where the new housing needs to be in this area and how, what to use the, the vacant land for. That is something that's going to happen as well. Excited about the new council members that I have to work with on that, both Ellicott and Mastin, because both districts are a part of this. And I believe this is something that we can get done. Lastly, I will say this, as an environmentalist, and I am to my heart, I think God made everything perfect. Everything perfect. And the only reason it got destroyed is because of how we dealt with it as men or women. However we dealt with it, we didn't do it right, and so we have environmental issues. I want to honor the DEC commissioner for being here, because clearly, I spent a part of my life, before I was even elected, cleaning up Kinsley Park. As you know, there was a plan on Kinsley Park. It, they, they made arsenic, and they left a lot of their trash there. The city of Buffalo years ago built a playground on it. This is when city of Buffalo still had like recreation aides who worked on the site of a playground. People got cancer and died from working at that playground. We cleaned it up, now it's a clean playground, and the city has just reinvested in it again. It's gonna be an amazing space. I've seen the design already. Day one, when I got to Albany, the first thing that was on my mind well, was two things. One was getting a nurse in every pub Buffalo public school, and the other one was cleaning up 850 80s Ferry. Again, a factory left its junk there. We were able to get Tom DiNapoli, who, by the way, was then the chair of the Economic the Environmental Conservation Committee, and then Majority Leader Paul Tokaz to that site. And a couple years later, it was cleaned up. Now people live there. It's called the town, the True Bethel Homes. It's a beautiful space. People love it. And lastly, I will mention the plan on East Delavan, former GM plant. They left a lot of toxins in the ground. Along comes a gentleman who wants to invest money in it, bring his business there, and create a new green energy product of a battery where they're literally building batteries that go into vehicles. These are all environmental prob problems that I help fix because I think it's important to clean up the environment. People were living across the street from that plant for decades, and no one ever said, you know, you could have some health impacts for being here. That's a problem. So we help fix that. And this is another one. So as much as my opponents on this issue, and by the way, they should know I love them, and I respect them, I just don't agree with them. I grew up between two brothers, and we always disagreed about some things every now and then. But that doesn't mean you love them any less and value their right to speak. But this is not a negative to the environment. This plan that the commissioner has come up with and that the community has agreed to is not a negative environment. In fact, it's about 
It's better, it's making the environment better. Talk about environmental justice. This is environmental justice, for real, for real. So you couple environmental justice and economics in the same sentence, you have a healthier people and a wealthier people. We're going the right way with this. And I know there are going to be still some challenges. I'm ready to take them on as well. I learned well from watching the governor. No problems taking on the challenge. Finally, I will say this, that there have been reclamation projects all over America. In Seattle, Washington. In Portland, Oregon. In Phoenix, Arizona. In Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Boston, Massachusetts. In Dallas, Texas. And now we can add to that list the east side of Buffalo. And now it's my pleasure, you know, you work in Albany, you need three agreements. You need the Assembly, you need the Senate, and you need the Governor. This young man has been a tremendous asset to me as a Assembly member as well as a Majority Leader. He is the Chair of the Transportation Committee. Although I should not be introducing him first, because I just looked at the list that the governor left here for me. <laughs> and I should be introducing another stalwart in this community, Sidney Brown, who actually joined the Rock community through the Black Chamber of Commerce. So when the Black Chamber of Commerce starts working on some things that will prepare opportunities for you to gain access to wealth, this is one of those results. There's an opportunity to gain access to wealth, and I really trust and hope that people will use it. Please join me in welcoming Sydney Brown. Well, good morning. I want to start off by saying waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who he is. It is because of him that we all stand here today. That was one of mine and Stephanie's favorite songs, and y'all gonna hear that repetitively because this is truly a day in history that we are making and forming together. My name is Sydney Brown. I am a servant of the Most High God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I am also a longtime member of the Restore Our Community Coalition. It is truly just a privilege and an honor to be here with you all. I do want to thank God first. I want to thank our wonderful Governor Kathy Hoko, our wonderful Assembly Majority Leader Crystal People Stokes, our wonderful Commissioner Dominguez. All the elected officials. There's been so many people, as it has already been stated, that have been a part of this, but I also want to thank their staff. Without wonderful staff members, our governor could not do what she does, our majority leader could not do what she does, our commissioner. All elected leaders are able to be effective because of the people who work alongside of them, so thank you. I also want to thank... the community members and the board members of Rock and so many people who have labored for this project for decades. This day is a day for the believers. No one believed more than our beloved sister and friend, our servant leader, Stephanie Barber Jeter. And I just want to take a moment of silence to just respect her presence and her work. She dedicated her life for this project and so many others. This project is her legacy. She championed Rock's challenge to remember, to reimagine, to redesign, and to reignite. Today I also want to remember those pioneering Rock members who have been mentioned, but I want to mention them because I was honored and privileged to work alongside them. Clark Eaton, who envisioned this project. The tenacity of Lumen Ross, who 
fostered the move momentum for this project and brought us to this day. And also with gratitude, want to remember Robert Cressy and the Wendt Foundation for their generosity. Stephanie would say that this day doesn't belong to her. It belongs to all the trailblazing rock members and the residents of the east side of Buffalo who joined together decades ago uh, to bring this to fruition. Those decades of community activism cannot be diminished by a few months of those who want to stop progress in our community who has fought for this for so long. I also want to clarify something. This project is not a DOT project, and it never has been. It has been community-led and community-driven from its inception. Our coalition spent decades to bring our elected officials from every level and the DLT to the table to understand community concerns and to work with the community create the plan we now have approved by the federal government. This is true community activism because it has been a labor of love and an act of faith by devoted steadfast members of our community who became active participants in the revitalization of their own neighborhoods to ensure better quality of life for the people who live here now and for future generations. The original construction of the Kensington project brought economic and environmental harm and devastation to homes, residents, and businesses along Humboldt Parkway and surrounding neighborhoods and business corridors, the arteries throughout the city of Buffalo, but especially Jefferson and Fillmore Avenues, causing physical, emotional, and financial hardship and devastation. These devastations have caused scars and hardships for our community as if slicing a hole through someone's heart. But today, today we celebrate the mending of that heart by building a bridge to better, better unity, better paying jobs, a safe and livable neighborhood, a sense of hope and reconnection and green space for everyone to enjoy. And I'll say that was at the heart of what Frederick L. Olmsted envisioned, green space, where it didn't matter what your social economic status was, didn't matter what the complexion of your skin was, but a place because we know that green space is healthy. And as our majority member mentioned, this is a restoration. This is a social justice movement. And today the healing process began. And I want to, with that, just remind us to continue to remember. Remember who was most negatively impacted by the construction of this project, and to remember that those should be the first and primary benefactor of the fruits of this. This is just the beginning. This is just a beginning to so many wonderful things of making our community better. So with that, I want to say to God be all the glory, and I want to challenge each of you in this room. This is not the end, it's the beginning, and we all need to roll up our sleeves and to get busy because there's so much work to be done. The bridge is just a starting point. Thank you all. Oh. Almost forgot. One of my favorite senators, Tim Kennedy, is coming to the podium. Let's welcome him. Let's have another round of applause for Sydney Brown and Rock. Thank you, Sydney. Um, how about a welcome home for Governor Kathy Hochul? Thank you so much, Governor Hochul. Always bringing good news to Buffalo, and this is extraordinary news. Thank you so much for your leadership and your vision. Uh, to our Majority Leader, Crystal People Stokes, to Mayor Brown, to County Executive Polencars, Chair Baskin, DA Flynn, Council President Scanlon, my fellow colleagues in the Assembly and the, the Legislature and the Council and the Commissioners, to the leaders of the community, 
to the faith-based community, to the Restore Our Community Coalition, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for everything that you've done to make today a reality. In the back of the room, I want to recognize Congressman Brian Higgins for his leadership over many, many years. And as the governor mentioned, our federal partners under President Biden, Transportation Secretary Pete Buttigieg, our federal partners, Senator Chuck Schumer and Kirsten Gillibrand, um, who visited Buffalo for this very project. This, as has been mentioned, has been decades in the making. And ever since the mistake was made to build an expressway through this incredible neighborhood, there's been an organized effort to reunite and reconnect the community. And when I became chairman of the Senate Transportation Committee in 2019, it seems like yesterday, but it was five years ago now, a little over five years ago, I said this to my colleagues in my very, very first meeting, we need to begin fixing the damage caused by what is now the Kensington Expressway, a highway that splits the east side down the middle like a scar fracturing a community and destroying a historic parkway in the process. And I'm proud to stand with my partners in government today, demonstrating that we've kept that commitment. Back in 2021, a coalition of government and community leaders came together here in Buffalo at the Science Museum with Governor Hochul and my colleagues here to call on New York State to expedite the Kensington Expressway redesign process. And at that time, we heard from Stephanie Barber Jeter from Rock about what that accelerated timeline would mean for the people who live in this neighborhood and have been fighting for this for years. Not only did we secure that expedited process, but also an additional $30 million to begin planning and design. In 2022, we helped secure a billion dollars in the budget to truly advance the project and get shovels in the ground. I, Governor, am excited about a June beginning for this extraordinary journey and for the future transformation of Buffalo and Western New York. It's a true testament to what can happen when multiple levels of government roll up their sleeves and get to work together as a unified front, demanding better for a community that's been overlooked for decades. And we will not let this expressway continue to divide another generation. We will not let this expressway weaken housing values and deter businesses from putting down roots because we know what this space should and now will be. With the right vision and purpose, we know that Rock and others that have worked so hard to unite our community are going to see that vision now through to reality. That vision is what will guide us through the next phase of this project. From the very beginning, we said that this is about amplifying the community's voice. We know that this must remain a focal point as this project moves forward. I want to take a moment to recognize the women who helped to get us here. Governor Hochul led us to this moment. Majority Leader Crystal People Stokes led us to this moment. And perhaps most of all, Stephanie Barber Jeter has led us to this moment. May she rest in peace. So once again, thank you all for joining us to celebrate not only this funding, but to celebrate what it means for the people whose lives will change because of it. I'm honored to have been a part of making today happen and another individual who's been instrumental in leading this project and our community forward for many years. And I'm proud to introduce as our friend and leader of the great city of Buffalo. Let's hear it for Mayor Buff Byron Brown. Thank you very much, Senator Kennedy. It is always a good day when our governor, Kathy Hochul, is back home in the city of Buffalo. Let's give our governor another round of applause.
Yes, I am an elected representative of this area, having represented this area as Mass and District Council member, New York State Senator, and Mayor for five terms. The announcement that the governor made today that the federal government has green-lighted the Kensington Expressway project to move forward is monumental for East Buffalo and the city of Buffalo. But more than being an elected representative, I've been a homeowner uh, within a stone's throw of the Kensington Expressway for 38 years. My wife, Michelle, and her parents and seven siblings grew up a stone's throw from the Kensington Expressway. My wife was a little girl when that expressway went in. Her family and the families that lived in the neighborhood that she grew up in well know the pain and the separation from the Kensington Expressway being built. You've heard some of the names. I want to recite them again. Stephanie Barber Jeter, Lumen Ross, Clark Eaton, Richard Cummings Sr., Richard Cummings Jr., Estephine Green, Ellen Harvey, the Restore Our Community Coalition, the Trinidad Park Neighborhood Association, the Black Chamber of Commerce. This is a community-driven project. Let's make no mistake about it. Let's not listen to all the noise. I remember first hearing about this project in the early 1990s. And the members of the community that conceived of this idea, they never gave up. They never stopped working. They never stopped talking. They never stopped pushing. They never stopped planning. This is their project. And so you're hearing from some of us talk, the city, the state, the federal government, but at the very beginning, the origin of, of this, the seed that was planted, the water that, that made this grow, the love that brought it all together came from the community. So to those community leaders, to those community pioneers, to those who have passed on in this work, to those who continue to struggle and push and strive to build a better community, I say congratulations. You know, it's, it's always said that people who are elected should listen to the people. I want to thank Senator Tim Kennedy for listening to the people. I want to thank Majority Leader Crystal People Stokes for listening to the people. I want to thank our governor, Kathy Hochul, for listening to the people. Today at City Hall, right now as we speak, we are having the annual Black History Month celebration. And Edwin Jeter, thank you for being here to represent your wife. One of, 
one of those that we will recognize at the Black History celebration is Stephanie Barber Jeter with a posthumous Lifetime Achievement Award. She was, yes, thank you. She was a community champion, president of the Hamlin Park Community and Taxpayers Association, chair of the Restore Our Community Coalition, and she knew that this project is more than a transportation project. A billion dollars is significant, and we can't and we won't lose that to our community. That's right, Ms. Ellen. But what Stephanie knew more than anything else was that this is a community transportation, a community transformation project. Yes, the community was damaged, it was divided, it was hurt. That hurt is going to be addressed. That pain, that separation is going to be put back together. So what I would ask everyone in this room as this project moves forward, let's support our governor. Let's support our majority leader of the state assembly. Let's not let anything stop the progress and stop this project from moving forward. As Governor Hochul said, let's build it now. Let's build it right now.